To many, the past few years of Minecraft updates have been underwhelming at best and awful at worst. Through lackluster content, broken promises, divisive decisions like mob votes and chat reporting, and major delays, Mojang have soured their reputation among the Minecraft community. While Minecraft is still going at large, a few months ago the community was turning more and more sour due to many decisions Mojang has made over the past few years. I think 1.21 is healing the community. With the recent addition of ominous trials, trial chambers in general, and of course unique items and mobs like the mace and the breeze, I feel Mojang is taking Minecraft in the right direction. But to talk about why Minecraft 1.21 is succeeding, I think it's important to discuss why the past few years have been falling short. Let's take a step back to 2020 with the announcement of Caves and Cliffs. This update is widely considered to be the start of a downward trend in the Minecraft updates. Mojang were riding the wave of success following the extremely popular and much needed Nether update with 1.16 and wanted to follow up with an absolute banger. So why not update the next big thing the community wants, Caves. Winning the Minecraft Live 2019's biome vote, the mountain biome was slated to be updated as well, and thus, Caves and Cliffs was born. It would end up being an update that changed how the entire world generated, as well as bringing tons of new blocks and points of interest, like Deep Slate, Amethyst, Copper, Lush Caves, Dripstone Caves, Bundles, the Deep Dark, and Archaeology, and so much more. This update was setting itself to be another fantastic update that the community would love. All of these additions were great, however, it was clear that Mojang bit off a little more than they could chew. On April 14th, 2021, several months into development of 1.17, Mojang uploaded a video titled A Caves and Cliffs Announcement, where the community was saddened to hear that Caves and Cliffs would be split into two parts with 1.17 and 1.18. With 1.17 coming out in just a couple months, there was no way Mojang would be able to make all the changes needed in such a short time. While the community was saddened by this, I think it was a necessary change, seeing how drastically Caves and Cliffs Part 2 changed up world generation. Part 1 pretty much just added the new blocks and copper to the game. It wasn't much, but it was something to keep the community interested for a little while. Later that year in October of 2021, Mojang announced that the Deep Dark biome was going to be pushed back into 1.19, the Wild Update, with Caves and Cliffs Part 2 launching in a little over a month in November. It was clear that Mojang hadn't fully realized their intended vision with the Warden in the Deep Dark. Fans would have to wait a little bit longer. However, 1.18 brought along massive changes to world generation, caves, and mining, so players were overall satisfied. Still no bundles or archaeology though. Minecraft Live that year announced the now infamous Wild Update, an update that many consider to be one of the worst modern Minecraft updates simply due to its lack of truly new content. So much of its content was stuff that we had already heard about from previous years. It featured things like the deep dark, mangrove swamps, frogs, boat chests, the LA, and that's really about it. During the livestream, Mojang announced the addition of fireflies to the game. This was immediately a hit among fans and got the community hyped. They also showed off some concept art for what appeared to be an updated swamp biome as well as an updated birch forest, both of which were much welcome additions to the game. The Deep Dark and the Warden were finally coming to the game alongside a brand new structure, the Ancient City. Still no sign of archaeology or bundles though. It was beginning to look that the Caves and Cliffs update was never going to be fully realized. As you likely know, on May 10th of 2022, several months into 1.19's development, Mojang uploaded a Ask Mojang video to YouTube where in which they announced that fireflies were not coming to the game because they're toxic to some species of frogs and Mojang didn't feel right adding that into the game. This was considered to be a lousy excuse as a simple solution to this issue would just be to have fireflies not eaten by frogs, but Mojang decided to not listen to the community and have them scrapped entirely. As if this wasn't bad enough, Mojang also stated that the concept art of an updated Birch Forest biome teased during Minecraft Live the previous year didn't count as a commitment to that idea. However, if you watch the live stream, it's pretty obvious that the updated biomes were intended to be a part of 1.19 and were removed later for whatever reason. As a side note, I do think it's important to note the impact the 2020 pandemic may have had on development during this time. It's not an excuse for announcing content and then delaying things or breaking promises, but it is an explanation. The Minecraft community was obviously extremely upset by this, and the video announcing these cancellations has 89,000 dislikes compared to only 34,000 likes. The Minecraft community wouldn't take it any longer. After years of delays, not to mention controversies like account migration or to Microsoft accounts, the Minecraft community was fed up with all of the broken promises and seemingly out of touch decision making Mojang was doing. This would only compound as the community would be hit again with another controversy just a couple months later when Mojang unveiled that chat reporting would be a thing. 
While I personally don't see too much of an issue with trap reporting, and I think the dangers of it were blown a bit out of proportion, I do think it's important to highlight the community's frustration with these decisions. Private server owners felt like they had less control over their own communities, with Mojang being able to just overrule any decision, not allowing players to play on any server, not just the ones they were banned from. Stack this with fears of manipulating chat messages or the system just failing, and players were extremely skeptical of this move. I do want to say though that Mojang is a private company, and if they don't want people to make sexual, racist, or otherwise offensive comments, I think they have every legal right to do it, and in fact, should do it. It's extremely bad to let hateful people free roam on your platform that you spend millions of dollars to uphold. With how many children play Minecraft, it can be easy to argue that some level of chat moderation is needed. However, that's just my opinion on the issue, and I know it's a little unpopular. With the wild update looking more like the mild update, the community was tired. In response to this, Mojang decided to not announce the name of Minecraft 1.20 at Minecraft Live 2022. So little was announced here. We had an unpopular mob vote again, although this time the community seemed very unified on which mob would win, we'll see how that turns out later, but beyond this, Mojang didn't announce much. They announced bamboo blocks, camels, chiseled bookshelves, hanging signs, just not much for an update. It was clear that Mojang wanted to take a slower approach to updates and work to listen to the community feedback more than ever before. Some would argue this was done just to save face as they had overpromised and underdelivered on the past few updates. Over time though, more features would be added to 1.20 such as armor trims, a new cherry biome, and of course, archaeology, albeit very different from how it was originally announced in 1.17. Once 1.20 was released in June of 2023, the community realized the sniffer was an extremely lackluster mob. It sniffs up the ground, digs up two seeds, and then that's it. That's all it does. It doesn't drop anything. It just stands around and pulls up two plants. Mojang teased another plant that would hang on walls, but canceled that one for some unknown reason. Archaeology was finally here, and I have to admit, I'm kind of disappointed with it. Digging up trail ruins is fun, but they're hard to find, and archaeology we saw in 1.17 was more involved and more interesting than what we got with 1.20. However, 1.20 did see old, major structures updated to have new armor trim. The Desert Temple even got a new room. However, with chat reporting coming in full swing and another update lacking in features, the community had cemented itself in a negative state. Come Minecraft Live 2023, however, a lot of that would change for some people. While the mob vote was extremely unpopular and drove a lot of negativity Mojang's way, Minecraft 1.21 was shaping up to be an amazing update simply based off what little they showed during the event. The crafter was added being a fantastic redstone component alongside the copper bulb, which they ruined in a couple snapshots when they changed the tick delay from one tick to two ticks. Thanks Mojang. Alongside the amazing crafter, Mojang said they wanted to focus more on combat adventures. They showcased this with a brand new dungeon, the Trial Chambers, featuring the new Breeze mob. From here, you'll likely know the stories. Over several snapshots, we've been drip-fed more and more content. Trial spawners gave way to the new Vault Block, essentially making Trial Chambers available to all players on SMPs, ensuring nobody misses out on the fun. Recently, Mojang added the Mace to the game, a brand new, perhaps a little OP, weapon. It's crafted using a heavy core and a breeze rod. The weapon is insane, dealing more damage when a player falls from high up and hits an enemy. It also cancels fall damage upon a successful hit. Having the same power as a diamond sword, the weapon is no joke. With snapshot 24w13a, however, Mojang would make the single most important snapshot for 1.21, at the time of writing this at least. Ominous trials were added to the game. This alongside many new features such as new effects, new potions, mace enchantments, made many players feel like 1.21 was finally going to be an amazing update. Ominous trials work by drinking an ominous bottle and then walking into a trial chamber. Ominous bottles can be obtained from killing a pillager captain. This also reworks villager raids, by the way. These ominous trials feature stronger mobs than normal ones. Mobs wear trimmed armor, sometimes even diamond armor. The game will summon potions above the players, striking them in mobs with effects like oozing or infested. Oozing spawns two slimes upon death of any mob affected by it, except other slimes. And infested causes players or mobs to spawn two silverfish when taking damage, albeit it's only a 5% chance per hit. Alongside other effects, these new trials come with ominous vaults. These vaults have better loot tables than the normal vaults. By going through a single trial chamber, I was able to get about 5 diamonds, a stack of emeralds, and much more from these vaults. And that's not to mention all the other cool mobs that I was fighting, all the fun I was having. 
These trials are entirely optional, as one has to actively drink from an ominous bottle to make the effect happen. This essentially adds a layer of horizontal progression to the game that is much appreciated. Overall, I think these trials help the progression and exploration of Minecraft worlds quite a bit. For many, alongside the new dog variants from a previous snapshot, seem to have brought some of the community back on Mojang's side. For others, this isn't really enough, and they're still waiting for that one more thing to be fully on board. If you watched my video essay, Minecraft's progression is awful, here's why, then I'd like to take a moment to go over some of the proposed solutions I had in fixing Minecraft's progression, whether it be horizontal or not. Something I said in that video is that structures need more unique loot or gear. I proposed a poison bow that defaults to shooting poison-tipped arrows and can be crafted with pieces found in jungle temples. The bow was a mere concept and was never really meant to be taken literally, but Mojang did do the thing I suggested be done in the form of the mace. I specifically said that I wanted a piece of gear that wasn't craftable by any traditional means. It has a unique function, it's you craft it in a unique way, and it's found in a unique structure. The mace is exactly that piece of gear. The mace is exactly the kind of thing that I want in Minecraft, and it's pretty clear that other players do too, given by the excitement around the new weapon. Another suggestion I had was that trial spawners with more in-depth MBT data. I suggested that mobs with custom armors and weapons, or maybe even mobs that move faster than normal, be added to the game. They went above and beyond this with ominous trials, adding six new effects, tougher trials, and better loot. If Mojang keeps making changes like these, Minecraft will continue to improve. While some may consider the experimental villager changes to be flawed, I think most criticism of this system can be chalked up to there being no way of easily transporting villagers, or people just being lazy. The villager rebalancing is the right move. Mending is the best enchantment in the game. It should require a bit more effort to acquire this item than just smashing lecterns over and over. Mojang clearly agrees with me as they're looking to patch it out. Overall, I felt very vindicated in regards to my progression video lately. While I may disagree with a couple points that I made in that video, I think it's clearly standing the test of time with all the changes Mojang is making. To be clear, I'm not saying I'm responsible for those changes, I just want to make that clear so nobody says it in the comments. I just think I happen to get it right with my solutions. But what are your thoughts on the recent snapshots? Do you think Mojang is working to heal the community after years of bad PR? Personally, I think it'll take a little more to fully heal the community, but I am really, really excited to see where 1.21 is headed, and I look forward to its release in just a few months. That's all for today's video. I'm still working on my Mario Wonder video. I have a few pages written down in the script. Writer's Block has been hitting me hard with this one. I wanted to make this video in the meantime to collect your guys' thoughts on 1.21, as well as do a little history lesson on why the community got so bent out of shape in the first place. The future of Minecraft is looking pretty good if you ask me. If you want to support my work, consider subscribing or liking the video. If you want to support me more directly, consider becoming a member. Members get their names on the ends of my videos, as well as cool perks like live stream VODs, early videos, and more. Anyway, I'll see you guys all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye!